from the skills and drills. We got just about eight and a half minutes left before we start. And we are going to work on bridging from the back. Meaning that those times when you get when you slip off the back a little bit and get a little gap. That's when we're gonna what we're gonna focus on. Some like to call it gap being gapped, some call it being dropped. But either way, you're off the back and need to get back on. So we're going to focus on that today. It builds on our events that we've been doing based on, that have been focused on positioning. We've got about four or five of us in here right now. If you're joining on, we've got seven and a half minutes to go. So periodically, you're going to hear me uh, talking, or excuse me, stop talking while I type. And so I apologize for those breaks in communication, but I got to chat out to people who are in Discord. So for those of you who are new, this is a skills and drills ride, meaning that it is not a race. It's a learning opportunity, and we teach each other. So like I said, periodically I go quiet and type stuff, and one of those minutes is right now. I'm going to type stuff out to the people that are just joining up. All right, so when we get going, folks, we're going to be starting at uh, 1.5 watts a kilo. Our 1.5 watts a kilo is to practice moving around the bunch without worrying about getting dropped. That is going to be key to what we're doing uh, later on in the class as you need to be able to figure out positioning and where you want to be because as we intentionally drop people off the back, you don't want to be accidentally dropped off the back when it's not your time to bridge. So those watching now, appreciate it. And we've got about five minutes before we start. We got Bob's watching. Hello, Bob. Switch over to the other page real quick because I don't think I get comments on that. We got seven folks watching. Appreciate everyone joining in. Said we got about five more minutes before we start. Make sure everyone's getting their uh, getting their water bottles, getting warmed up. There we go. Much better right there. Awesome. So what we're going to do in our class today, like I said, we're going to be working on when you're getting gaps. So we're going to start off nice and easy together, and then as we get moving through it, we'll slowly send people off the back. Now we're going to start it off by going nice and easy, our crawl, and then do our walk, and then do our run. And we're going to let everybody work together when they get bridged off the back. What's up, Stefan? How you doing? Oh, thanks, Bob. Bob's adding a podcast. Bob's a hard worker. Hopefully he can uh, catch on a little bit, but not too much, because he's not on my team for the uh, intergalactic, multi-planetary, multi-dimensional race on Saturday. So, Bob, once we start talking about tactics, I need you to uh, sign off. You can listen to this after Saturday. Hey, New Day there. Hey, what's up, brother? How you doing? Oh, I'm all right. Just... Uh, getting the legs warmed up and I'm trying to find this mosquito and get him close enough to kill. Nice. Yeah. He keeps staying away. He's being smart. How's the weather out there in South Carolina now? Uh, it's pretty cold. Uh, I'm looking at like uh, 36 in the garage right now. I think it was like 22 this morning Ooh. when I got up. So we're in a cold spree right now. All 
I don't think I can handle that. So you choose mosquitoes over cold? Yeah, any day. I'll risk Zika. Victoria, how you doing? <laughs> Steph Stefan's looking here to learn about how to be a super be better super villain. Hi, Ian. Hey, how's it going? Good, and you? Oh, you know, just uh, spitting out the uh, the uh, instructions real quick on the, uh, on the old message system here for Zwift. Uh, let's see. So remember, as we get our warm-up going, we're going to be rolling out at 1.5 watts a kilo. Practice moving around the bunch. Don't uh, stay in one spot. Use me as a center guide. And then just practice seeing what it takes to go from the front to the back, the back to the front, and to hold a position for a little while. You'll be surprised at how easily you can just sit up, maintain a position, or slightly slide back. And you'll also be surprised at what it takes to move from the back to the front, even at easier paces. All right, we got an hour or a minute and a half left. All right. <clears throat> so we got anyone for who's a first timer on Discord? Nope. All right. Well, then y'all know. Feel free to jump in and provide your own commentary, comic relief, um, whatever you want. For your experience. This is not meant to just be me talking, although sometimes it seems like that. Please feel free to jump in. And if you're watching, feel free to throw in questions. If you disagree with something we're saying, or if you want to add to it based on your experience, that is also very welcome. So for those of you who are on Discord and can hear me, we're going to see some flyers go out at 5, 6 watts a kilo. We're not going to chase them. If you see yourself getting far ahead of me, just drop back. Um, I'm going to put out on the chat the, the uh, power efforts that we're going to do, the watts per kilo, and we'll try and keep together at that. So as we get out, our watts per kilo, 1.5 is a max when you're on the front. If you're moving around, that's fine. You might go more, but if you're on the very front, it's 1.5 max. All right, we are rolling. All right. So I hope everyone's feeling pretty good. We're going to do some small bursts today. We will not be doing anything really crazy, but we will be focused on bridging from the from a gap position off the back to the front. So you will have times where you may be going upwards of three to four watts per kilo, but for a very short period of time. One of the reasons we're covering this today is something I saw while watching Worlds, and I've seen on many uh, many other events that once people get gapped off the front, they don't tend to respond very well. They sit there and let it go and let it go and let it go, go and all of a sudden it's 20 seconds. The, the uh, important part about responding to that gap is crossing it quickly and shutting it down and then getting into the right position. We covered it a little bit last week. All right. So let's try and stay pretty bunched up. We've already got some folks drifting off the front. So 
So those of you who are up front, go ahead and ease it off a little bit. You don't want to split up yet. Just find the beacon and slide back to me. So Are you using want... mosquito power during the intergalactic race? <laughs> I have no idea what my team has chosen for the power up or our power because uh, I'm not allowed to participate in those discussions since I know what the powers are. <laughs> I'll be watching that one. Yeah? It should be fun. I'm looking forward to it. So Ian, you know, I participated in my first race about two weeks ago on Zwift. And I think I came into it after a few of your classes pretty well prepared. But on nice. the whole, I was kind of surprised at the intensity of it. It was like a cyclocross race. It was top heart rate the entire oh. time. Oh, yeah. No, we're, you're definitely pegged in Zwift races. That is, uh, that's a characteristic of Zwift, Zwift races. You are, it's, it's much more like a crit than it is an actual race, and Cyclocross fits that. There's no consequence for really blowing up. No. Yeah, I actually think I did okay. I kind of held in there. I signed up as a D because I wasn't sure I was right on the edge. I ended up getting booted up into the low Cs because I did well enough, but it was fun. It was a, it was a workout. Nice. So while you're in here, really work on that positioning. This is a, I mean, we cover it all the time, so it, we can't cover it enough, but it is really, really important that you guys move around a little bit. And I know Mark can probably tell you that uh, being able to hold this position probably was key to staying with a little bit faster group of guys and ladies. I can tell you for me coming off of a few weeks of not really riding or not riding at all and then a weeks before that was all that, uh, you know, for me it was 85% was what I was focusing on. That was, uh, didn't translate well for being able to get, hold my own in races. So I've had to really focus on my positioning as well. I can't just outpower people in the climbs right now. All right, about a little over five minutes left. I like what everyone's doing here. We're in a nice tight bunch. If you're behind me and you've been behind me for a little bit, go ahead and make your way to the front. Get on the front, see what it's gonna take to get through this group. I think you're gonna be surprised at what it takes to get through the group. If you haven't really been working on that. Good, so I'm gonna go over with y'all what we're gonna do for the first bit. And then we're going to uh, get into it, and I'll type it out over the, over the message here. The first part we're going to do is we're going to do our normal split into two groups. Last name with the first letter starting in A through M will be group one. Group two means your last name starts with N through Z. And we're going to force a gap. And there will be a big gap. It'll be five, ten seconds. And then we'll settle down. Then you're going to want to bridge. And what this is going to be simulating is the acceleration of the group creates a gap that maybe you can't hold the acceleration, but once the group breaks or gets that gap, they settle down. You'll see this a lot in races. Now, granted, it's usually going from really hard to super hard back to really hard, but same concept applies. We're just going to do it a little bit easier so we can all stay together. The, uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to have the group who I designate as the front accelerate to a 2.5 and hold that. And the group who's on the back at 1.5, we'll sit at 1.5 until we get about a five, five to 10 second gap. And then I'll slow the front group down to 1.5 until the back group to chase. I'm gonna want you to chase individually because generally you don't get dropped in a group that's able to respond. If you get dropped, usually there's only one or two of you who can respond. So I want you to come back individually and get across the gap as fast as you can without putting yourself into a, uh, a lactic debt so that, that you can't recover from. So what I mean by that is you need to come across hard and fast, but when you get to the group, your lungs and legs shouldn't be burning. I mean, you might be breathing hard, uh, 
Phil, it's not a 1.5 training ride. We change based on what our drill is that we're doing. Um, so you're not going to be focused just on getting across. It's getting across and then being able to settle in and hold that again. Because the worst thing that can happen is you bridge, you catch on, and you get dropped right away. Because you'll repeat that one or two times and then you're gone. So we want to avoid that. This will be bridge, sit on, ease into it and recover, and then you're able to respond. But you're not blown up right when you get there. So good job by most of y'all for controlling your, your output so no one jumped off the front as we hit that small incline. Good job. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, type out the instructions here. So, apologize for my silence. What's up with Froome? Uh, he's got asthma. He's got really, Seems really bad asthma. Seems like a lot of them have asthma. I took my inhaler before joining Skulls and Drills tonight. <laughs> I got mine here just in case. Well, actually, though, I do say a lot of people like that, they, they get exercise-induced asthma. It's pretty common for uh, endurance athletes. Yeah, just, I don't know, I'm worried it's just the first step on the slippery slope. It seems like they all start this way. Yeah, I know. One good thing, I think, is he's not trying to hide behind it. You know, he's kind of come out immediately and said, like, he's open to investigation. I think that's that's the right thing to say. We'll see yeah. how it goes with Sky. But he doesn't seem to be sweating it too hard. Yeah, that no. is true. That's different. Yeah, it's not like the Wiggins thing. So, we'll see. Yeah, he's just vanished into the darkness. No, he did a right. rowing competition. He's actually, yeah, I was going to say, he's a rower now. <laughs> It's okay to dope over there. Oh, I'm cutting it close on time here. Just got bit by the mosquito. Look forward to your superpowers then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't think it's radioactive. Uh, ben, I am not. <laughs> yes, I'm going less than 100 watts right now. Um, 1.5 watts per kilo for me is slightly over 100 watts. So, yeah. Okay, group one, go to the front. Group two, go to the back. So group one, get behind me. Well, I guess there's some are taking off already. <laughs> I didn't say go yet. All right, for those folks with me, let's bring it back to the group. Up front, if you guys can slow down. One point out the very front. All right. Yeah, New Jay, that's your group. You're already in the breakaway. Too long without doing skills and drills. Typical. Sorry. 
That's what happens when you're nearly pro. It's too hard for me to stay in the peloton. <laughs> always breaking away off, the, always uh, getting dropped off the front. All right, try combi, three combi, try combi. Hope you're able to jump back in with us. Your second off. Gushu's on a uh, tri bike or a TT bike, so not gonna be that awesome for that person trying to catch back onto a drafting group. Let's start organizing G1 and G2. G1, you guys should be right behind me. Good, good job up front. I appreciate you guys coming back. Thompson, go to the back. Toddy, go to the back. All right, G1 and G1 only. Accelerate to 2.5 when you see it on the screen. All right. Just 2.5, we don't need to blast away. Keep it nice and easy here. Very good. That's what I like. You got two seconds. Wood, you are group two. Group two is nervous. I know. Got about three seconds. Five. We got about five or six to you guys now. Looks like. Okay, group one, settle. We're at 1.5. All right, so I want you to have the bridge individually. And I want you to try and figure out what's a good pace for you. I'm gonna. I'm almost positive that some folks are gonna blow up. Good job, front group here. Good job. Good. I'm going to slide back here on the view so I can watch that. Chris doing 2.7 watts a kilo, 142 beats per minute. You can probably go a little harder, Chris. I'm not trying to say you're not doing a good, good job, but... 140, there you go, 148, that's a lot better. You don't have to do 58, don't blow up. All right. So once you get to the front, go ahead and ease up with us. Good job, Chris. All right. All right, we got getting bigger and bigger up here. That's what I like. See wood, very nice, coming across. Come on, Woodhouse, you can do it. Front group, let's ease the 1.0. All right. 
me where I am. We got some folks coming on. It's looking good. So one of the things to remember on this, folks, when we were doing this, it's this is a difficult thing to figure out. Unfortunately, we got a little bit longer than I wanted. It's a 12-second gap. We're gonna do, when we do it the next time. We'll try to keep it five to ten. That's a lot more manageable. But as you're seeing, that we're not going very hard up front. But we're going pretty easy. But because we're a good group, a good size group, we're getting a speed advantage from the group group dynamics of the draft. So for those of who are going by, who are behind us, still trying to hold, you know, 2.5 to 3, they're not making up near the ground that you would think. Oh, uh, Dukowski just popped. Good. So we got Scott, Woodhouse, Santana all back there working together. Almost on us. All right. Lots of folks come back on. All right, once you get back on, G2, make your way up to me. G1, slide to the back. All right, we're going to do it again with uh, G2, switching out, and then we'll go ahead and do it one more time for the groups. Omar, how you doing? All right, let me slide around here real quick on the uh, angles and see where everyone is. Oh, All right, Santana's almost on us. Great job. All right. So, group two. Once we get over the rise, we're going to start. Group two and only group two. Going at 2.5 watts a kilo now. So New Jay, I got you in the back. If you can let me know what we've got about a five to ten, once we eclipse five second gap to your group. Sounds good. So group one, you're gonna hold 1.5. 2.5. No, group group one is holding 1.5. Roger that. <laughs> All right, Ian, I got you about six seconds up the road from me. Okay. G2, settle at 1.5. Group 1, bridge. All right, very good job there, Hammerly. Gushui. Cole, good surge, good push. Can't see your beat for a minute, so I don't know if you're blowing up. All right, Duarte, let's go. Both of you. Nice and easy, still up in the front here. We got one guy that's like kind of going sideways, doing trick riding. <coughs> All right, he's the 1.5 front group, or 1.0, excuse me. All right, we'll let, the, let some folks catch back on. So right there, we were able to see bridging individually is pretty tough. Once you get a gap, you got to put down some gas. So who felt that they could easily catch right back on if we had another acceleration? 
I think I can get pulled again. Do it. So who would blow up if we had an acceleration right after you got on the group? I would have blown up. Yeah. So this I is where I've been doing. Go ahead. I've been doing a lot of sweet spot intervals, and um, I found that now after that um, heart acceleration, when I get on the group, heart rate drops straight back down. Good. Yeah, exactly. It. That's a that's a good sign of fitness when your heart rate drops really quick. That's a real good sign of fitness. All right, we got a, Scott's good to go. Nice. Got a, all right, Santana's heart rate's dropping. Guzman's still trying to catch on. Okay, let's switch it up again. All right, so what we're gonna do though on this one is, once we hit three seconds, I'm gonna release the bridgers, but we're not gonna slow down right away. We're not gonna slow down. We're gonna hold 2.5 for another 30 seconds once we pass that three second gap. So that's gonna simulate the groups attacking, the pace is picked up, and it's holding until they feel they have the right comp composition or you know, hostilities are ceased for a little bit while people try and catch their breath. So let me type that out, then we'll get going. So the front group will sit up to 1.0 after the 30 seconds. Questions on that? Not too complex, right? Good to go. Okay. So group one, go ahead and take the front. I'm going to sit with the back group this time. So group two, we need to sit at 1.5. All right, Duarte's up, two seconds. So that's a three second gap almost right there and it doesn't look like much. 30 seconds starts now. All right. Thanks, uh, making up for the ride on. Let's go ahead and bridge, folks. I'm sitting here waiting for, for some of the back folks. All right, I'm going to hit the gas, so if you want to come with me, come with me. All right, we got about eight to 10 second gap up the road, but you can see it, so that's good. If you can see them, a lot of times you can pull them back. Front group at 1.0, folks. All right, very nice. 
Very nice. <laughs> I like Scott B. <laughs> Not sure if rule number five applies to his lift. Yeah. All right, Frank, how you feeling? How was that? A little bit pretty, better. Yeah, you had a pretty good bridge there. All right. Let's get Lauren Scott back to us. Give some encouragement. So pick up the RPMs, Lauren. Gear mashing back there. That's rough on the body. All right, let's uh, start switching it up. Let's get reorganizing, reorganize. Group two at the front, group one at the back. So Santana, Tati, all you guys at the front, at the front. Group one, stay with me. 1.5 group one, let's let them get their gap. You can see, you can see a three second gap isn't much. At 30 flat is when they're gonna ease off. So go, go, go group one. Very nice, good job. Scotty B's looking good. Group two, he's off. Nice work, nice work. Uh, Joel, we are wearing the Castelli gray jersey. It's pretty much only for this ride, I think. I haven't seen anywhere anywhere else. Brent, we would love to have you. We're on every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Good job, good job. Come on, Graham. All right, let's drop back to 1.0 at the front. I know everyone picked up because of the little climb. All right, let's keep it nice and tight. We're going to quick recovery and then we're going to go into talking about those repeated accelerations. So what we're going to do is I'm going to have a group at the front who's on for 10 seconds then off for 50. So we'll, we're going to repeat that four times. The uh, 
but we're going to accelerate from a 1.5 to a 2.5. The back group, once there's, it has to wait for a gap to form and then can chase. But we're only going to be on and off 10 seconds, 5 seconds. So, you know, that gap is only going to form after the 10 seconds. So you're basically going to chase once we go off. And once you get back on, you got to sit in. So you're going to be chasing for 50 seconds, up to 50 seconds, or more, depending on what you let the gap get to. But you can't change, chase that first 10 seconds, at least not the first iteration. So, like I said, front group be attacking for 10 seconds. After that 10 seconds, you can bridge. All right, so crystal clear. Uh, Kev Brooks, ODZ has a secret meaning. It, I think it's lost. Uh, it's found by ancient scholars. Founded by ancient scholars. Uh, maybe the Germans. I don't know, it's like San Diego. I'm just. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not at liberty to disclose more right now. All right, so if you're up at the front, let's keep it at 1.0. I'm bringing the group back with uh, Chris. All right, if you're with me, we're going to lift it to 2.0. That way we can catch back onto the main field. <laughs> Thanks, Kev. Did Laborio get dropped off the front again? Probably. That poor guy, he just can't help it. I'm just cruising at 1.1 here with people are blowing by me. Yeah, I know. And that's one of the problems with the group dynamics, unfortunately. <laughs> All right, group one, get behind me. G2 at the back. On my signal. So after 10 seconds, we can chase, right? Correct. All right, we're going to go at the 36-minute mark. That's, that way it's very easy. So let's all hold 1.5. And you may not have to chase right away. What's going to happen is it's probably going to accordion effect. All right, 2.5. All right, he's the 1.5. Chasers chase. But try and get fall right back into your back position. So is that too easy for you guys to get back on? Yep. All right. 
We'll, we'll modify it on the fly. Group one, accelerate. Yeah, there was enough people scattered where we never really lost the draft. Yeah. So we're gonna be going at zero and 30 every time. So if you're in group two, make your way to the back. All right, group one, accelerate. Well, we got some folks off the front that haven't been caught, so. I think the acceleration has actually blown up group one, too. Now, guys on the uh, group two people, you can just keep chasing. You don't have to slow down just because we slowed down if you're not on the group. But once you're on, you got to drop back to that 1.5. There's a few people that have really figured out if they sit tight on a wheel, the acceleration's towing them. So that's a perfect lesson learned from this. Good position on a good wheel means you're not gonna get dropped for a small acceleration. Accelerate again. All right, front rider slow to 1.0. We're going to switch it up once we regroup. Ah, that's not good. Next thing, hit the A button. Oh man, I'm at the back now. I gotta put in some work. Catch back on. Tell you to join us. That's what happens, folks, when you hit the A button on accident. All right, Crombie, stay with me. As we go by, feel free to jump on, folks. All righty. So we're going to do the same thing with group two. We're going to go the 10, 20 repeats. So remember, if you're group one, you're going to be at the back now. And when you catch back on, always try and stay at the back of the group, whatever group you're on. Let's bunch up tight to start. Santana, Duarte, Scott, UJ, come on up to us. Very nice. Chris. Proceeding. Okay. And remember, group one, don't accelerate unless there's a gap.
So don't just accelerate because others around you are accelerating it. That's kind of defeating the purpose for this right now. All right, we're going to go at 43. Easy now, easy folks. Control yourselves. All right. Try and stay real tight if you're on the back. Not too bad. We're a little strung out, but not too bad. All right, group two, go. 2.5. Very nice, nice and easy. Group one needs to be bridging. Good job, Combi. And... Group two, go. I'm not in a good gear for this right now. Suddenly that got hard. Ease up, ease up. 1.5 for group two folks. All right, we are strung out nicely. You guys in the back should be bridging. Ease up. Hey, just going, hey, bridge is going bridge. That's right. <laughs> All right, go. New Jay, good job staying right in there. He's up. And go. Man, I'm feeling that leg crusher. <laughs> Dude, I was just thinking the same thing. I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> the squats killed me on Monday. Dude, I had, a PT, you, test. Okay. I had a PT ahead. test on Tuesday, so I, I did my workouts on Monday, and I'm, I was feeling it for the fitness test. I'm not a gym guy, and I never have them. And yeah. uh, they totally, Let's I go. don't think I was prepared. <laughs> I think it was the monster walk that got me. Yeah. yeah, it was tough. Here I am. I, I text Ian on Sunday. I'm like, you know, I'm used to doing 14 hours on the bike. I see you guys only have a single in three this week. Like, can I do a little bit more than that? I don't even want to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, you bunched up nicely. Great bridging. Great bridging on the part of group one. One more minute. So two more efforts. And go. Two, one, and ease up. Hold it here at 1.5 for 15 more seconds, and we'll slow to 1.0, and we'll do one last drill.
All right, let's regroup at 1.0. We got a few few folks on the back. or slightly off the back. Let's let them catch on. So again, what you are noticing if you are still trying to chase on, even though we've all eased up, the group dynamic is such that it is very difficult for us to slow the speed of the group, even if we slow our efforts. Let's wait for Lauren. Lauren's hammering it back on very nicely. All right, so the last one we're going to do is going to be just me doing the surging. Well, actually, tell you what, it'll be new Jay and I. We'll do it back and forth, and then you guys have to bridge to us, and we're going to do... We're going to do five second surges, but we're going to go hard on our five seconds. Then we'll do 15 seconds easy. So we'll go hard to easy. And our easy will be 1 to 1.5. And our hard is going to be hard. Um, so roughly five seconds, like, Nujay. Like 12 watts per kilo? Yeah, so something like that. Just gonna, uh, <laughs> no, 7 to 8. <laughs> 7 to 8 is fine yeah, for five power. seconds. Yeah. Just a moderate 12 would be good. Waiting for one of these where he asked me to go for like 60, 60 minutes at like four or five or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's coming. So after the first surge, you guys can chase. You gotta give us a chance to really mess this up for everybody. We're starting 20 seconds. So new Jay coming up to the front. We're going at 49.30? Yeah. All right. So be in control when you bridge. Easy at the front still. All right, let's go. All right, easy now. All right, get set, let's go. And easy. Go. And easy. Go. And easy. <laughs> Once you catch us, sit up, folks. <laughs> Ready, Nuje? Going at 40 again. Go. <laughs> Go. Easy. We'll go, we'll stop at 52. Go. Easy. Go. Easy. Go. And easy. All right, you guys look pretty good there. 
That's great. All right, go ahead and spin out the legs. Good thing you couldn't see my face. <laughs> well, I wasn't talking about how pretty you are, Chris. That's a given. That's yeah. a given. All right, one second, I'll do a recap. Oh, the 110 cadence feels great. All right, so quick recap from today's uh, fun little event. And today was all about those small bridges when you get popped off the back of a group. That happens all the time to everybody. Sometimes it's you're not paying attention. Sometimes it's just that the pace kicked up a little bit. And it was just a little too much at that time. So what we were looking at is how do you cover that gap quickly without blowing yourself up so you can't respond to the accelerations? Because I will tell you from a tactics perspective, if I drop someone off the back and it wasn't due to a sudden acceleration and you have to bridge back on, I'm probably going to hit you again just to see if you're tired. Um, that's, just, that's just the way it works. Because if you're close to popping, I want to pop you so I don't have to deal with you later. So what we looked at was different situations. One was that the acceleration was sudden and then slowed suddenly. So it was not a very big acceleration and then the group slowed down. That happens a lot of times. Someone gets a little antsy in the group, maybe puts on an attack, or just rides out the front. Maybe it was you hit a small climb. Something small happens and you create that small gap. That's imperative for you to get across that real quick because that usually is not indicative of something that's gonna last. The second one we covered was that acceleration, and it chased, and then it slowed. So what, what happens often is that acceleration happens They'll see the people that got chasing. They'll hold their, their higher level pace. And then when they feel that the group is chasing is either small enough or maybe not, many aren't gonna catch, the group might slow down a, a bit to recover their own legs and figure, okay, those who are coming back on are probably gonna be tired, they're less of a threat now. You know, there's not anything that's, dis that's disgusted in the group, it just happens. And the last thing we did was those constant accelerations. Of accelerations happen, you gotta get back on, you gotta cover it down. Ideally, in a situation like that, you have teammates, someone who's designated to cover it down and shut down moves. But when you're isolated or you don't, you, know, you don't have teammates around you or in a crit type race, you're constantly having to close those gaps and keep it nice and tight. So what we saw there was those who, after that first gap, responded quickly and started noticing every time we went, every time the gap opened, they crossed it. Every time it opened, they crossed it. And they, they stayed right on the wheel. Pegala la, la llanta, chupando goma. So you're staying right there. And that means it's much harder for me to get away from you as the lead rider. It's much easier for me to get away from you if I attack you coming from behind vice if I'm trying to attack you off the front because you're benefiting from that draft. So as I accelerate, I'm actually gonna pull you with me. It's, it sucks when you're trying to do that off the front because sometimes you're just stronger than the other person, but you know that's the way it goes. Be a better tactician and get yourself off the front. So does anybody have any questions about what we covered today? Nope. All right, great. So uh, for those of you who are participating in the intergalactic race later on this weekend on Saturday, I look forward to seeing you there. Uh, you won't know who I am. I'll be on my nickname of my superhero. But uh, should be a lot of fun. And for those of you who are participating, you know, Team ODZ puts on just about every three or four months a themed race where we create a special format. <laughs> And they're a lot of fun. And there's, that means there's a lot of inter-team trash talking. And we divide up into groups of three to five or six, depending on what we've got going on. 
they've had some fun ones like the Mafia race, and they all have different rules to them that make them different than just a regular race. All right, folks, so that's going to pretty much wrap up our skills and drills. We'll be here next Wednesday at the uh, same time, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. I uh, hope you all can join us again. I have no idea what we're going to be covering yet next week because I have to see how my legs are after some of the workouts I've planned for everybody in the endurance lab. <laughs> we will be doing a group workout next Wednesday morning at 5.15 Eastern, 5.15 a.m., that will be a, one of our endurance lab workouts. It'll be a group workout format in a, in a module. And there's a couple throughout the week as well. Jason Flores hosts one uh, later on Wednesday morning, uh, Pacific time. And then I believe there's a couple other times throughout the week. I'm not 100% sure on all of them. I'd have to look it up. But uh, you can check it out on the ODZ or the endurance lab, or me, the endurance lab, lab page. I encourage you to take a look at it. Those are the kind of things we do in the endurance lab. And that's, we've got stuff moving forward as well. For other ODZ events during the week, let me switch over so I can put up the schedule for those watching. We've got a number of different uh, options, both ra uh, races and information. We've got in the feed zone going on Friday morning. Then we've got a heroes race on Saturday. Mondays we have Magnum Monday, the Euro Decaf Ride, and Chat and Chill, which is a fantastic uh, ride by Taylor Freestat, very informational. She brings on guests and does interviews while they ride. She talks about performance, peak performance, uh, you know, riding techniques, nutrition, a whole bunch of different topics. It's a lot of, it's, a, it's great. This last week they did exercising in the airport. And then uh, as we move through, we have What's Up With Power on Wednesday mornings, which is a ride where you learn about how to effectively use your power meter for training. So if you have any questions, head on over to the TMODZ Facebook page or TMODZ.com for more information on that. And with that, that is going to be all for me, folks. Again, thanks for joining in. Thanks a lot, Ian. Thanks, Ian. Have a good night. Mm -hmm.